Mining content, a cross-training exercise. Satisfying work may begin with content or may begin with processes you love. In the latter case, meaning arises as work unfolds. Either way is satisfying. Any artist can start from either place based on intent and vision. What excites you? When a short list of topics excites you, a place to begin is never lacking. Here's how to get started. Number one, think. What do you care about? You can think about it on your own or share ideas with a friend. Raise awareness by tuning into the world. Visuals, radio, books, all provide clues. Number two, write. Try free association. Write what do I care about at the top of a page and then get going. Stop when you run out of thoughts and review. What do you see? Another angle? Write an essay and yes, it can be a shitty first draft. Describing what most brings you joy, saddens you, frightens you, or touches a place inside that says, I must do something. Then prioritize. Your list may have 30 topics or four, it doesn't matter. The question to ask is where will you start? Eventually, you may be able to work on several series at once, but most of us do better focusing on one idea at a time. Prioritize topics and choose the top three. Now choose the topic to launch first. You may feel nervous about how you'll pull this off, but do you feel a little excited about this idea? That's a great sign. The next steps work in tandem with the last three. By the way, the best thing about this approach is that it isn't to get you working on a single piece. Instead, you're working on tools and subject matter, the foundation of the series. There's no way to know how far this topic will lead you or when it will end. Degas painted hundreds of paintings of ballerinas. Chuck Close has used a distinctive and magnificent version of pointillism in varying permutations his entire career. So don't get too far ahead of yourself. Refining your likes. Now that you've made lists and other bits of writing about what excites you, continue narrowing down how you might use the information. For example, try free association again. Write a subject at the top of the page, set the timer, and then write whatever comes to mind as a list. Don't edit or judge. This list usually identifies elements that are already visual, which can be used as design elements in a series if you intend to work with figurative imagery. Next comes culling. Write down visual elements you noted as a new list. This is the beginning of gathering elements to tell the story. Organize elements to see how they look together. You may notice something's missing, or more exciting, your mind may begin riffing immediately on where else this could go. What additional elements spring to mind? Next comes skill assessment. Now approach the project from the angle of required materials and tools. Scope creating the series by thinking about what you love to do plus what you're good at. Alignment, right? How will it shape the tools needed to make the series a reality? Then consider number four, symbolic color. At some point, think about how color fits in. Some colors will be appropriate for your topic and some will not. Give thought to this early in order to be intentional about the choices you make. Identifying colors now guides the choice of mediums you have on hand prior to launching. Continuing the work. The process is cumulative. Once an idea is embraced, the free association provides visual elements and may also spur thinking in another direction. Ping, ping, ping. Sorting elements to select those that best tell the story is followed by determining materials and tools. Don't forget to think about elements from a stylistic point of view. If the elements hang together stylistically, nothing gets in the way of the story. Be rigorous with this evaluation. One visually discordant element can throw everything off. There are occasions when this may be a deliberate act on your part, but make sure when you do it, it's intentional. 
Fleshing out an idea by following the practice I've described automatically introduces the other elusive quality we've discussed before, focus. Working from content, even if the content is a set of nonspecific elements, desire to explore form or color relationships, as opposed to content with a storyline, is so much easier than opening the toolbox of everything you know how to do and then thinking, okay, what now? Settling on an idea first, followed by deciding where to go with it, focuses the project. Will you wander from the path? Possibly. Quite likely, as a matter of fact, making isn't static. Romping up and down the path should be encouraged and really should be expected. But charting a basic map at the start means it's there for you. It's a source of ongoing navigation. If a detour doesn't work out, you can return to the starting point to recalculate. Making is a living, breathing relationship between you, your artist self, and your idea. Staying the path you've chosen around every corner, no matter what the twists and turns, is the route to distinctive work you will lovingly call your own. Artists respond. Betsy Miraglia wrote, Focus is my key word right now. I often work in a series with a similar theme throughout. My hidden book series is an example. The key word is hidden. I write in a journal which is for my eyes only. By including the cover of a locked book, somewhat hidden in each of the series pieces, I conceal what is written within. The overall image recreates curiosity in the viewers, hopefully holding their attention while they explore the meaning in the pieces. Playing with the word hidden allows me to have fun while I discover interesting ways to disguise the hidden book that tells my story somewhere within the artwork. If you'd like to actually see a picture of Betsy's piece, Buffalo Run, you could look on page 94 of the Creative Strength Training book. Valerie Herter wrote, I'm only through part one of the exercise and my studio is a lovely rumple of photographs, clippings, notes, sketches, and scraps. Jane pointed out that when we have so many directions to go, one can get frozen and not choose anything. We're scattered before we start. This verbalized a key stumbling block for me. I thought it was a personal failing. Seeing it stated in the essay made me realize this is a common obstacle. I'm grateful to see how to move through this by writing, being intentional, and setting some limits. This is gold for me. Please note I'm returning to artwork after quite a long period away, so I wasn't sure what I'd find in my list of things I care about. Huh, I'm interested in the same things I cared about 15 years ago, which is very comforting. Someone once said, all artists tell the same story over and over. I feel that's true in many ways, but I know what my story is, and there is still more to say. So in a way, I'm picking up dropped threads. Mindy Fitterman wrote, a long ago bow resurfaced in December. This relationship spans several states and decades with absences for years at a time. Only 15 years ago, I discovered he's jolly good company in a fabric store, full of enthusiasm and insightful observations. Two days ago, I called him, and before I knew it, I was talking about my current project, the inspiration, the photographs, the ideas, the costs, the shifting ideas, the problems to be resolved. He was right with me on every bit of it, and then I remembered this week's lesson. I swear the more I talked, the more I could see my project getting smaller and smaller. So I stopped myself and then I explained why. It's very tempting to share art ideas with someone who understands the creative process, but today I took time to write everything down. By the way, when I'm feeling full of words and I can't type fast enough, I pick up my cell phone and I dictate an email to myself. It's the easiest way I know of to get that miserable, shitty first draft out of the way, and it's actually kind of fun. Mary Elmusa wrote, 
The process of mining content really made me think about keeping ideas incubating rather than discussing them at an early stage. I believe in this policy and have witnessed how the power of ideas can wither if discussed prematurely. This also goes back to lessons on patience and taking time, all the time one needs for ideas and for work to emerge to one's highest standards. I developed a big picture goal this week, or it came to me, I should say, which could direct my future work, but which I will refrain from discussing. I will say it's one that will help answer the question, why am I making art with more certainty? I feel it's worthy of my time and I feel good about the possibilities it will bring. What I see as methods to reach this goal will take a lot of time. So I feel my impatience rearing up. Conclusion. There's no way to know how far a topic will lead or when it will end. Tibetan monks paint hundreds of energy circles and then whisk them away. Mary Cassatt painted hundreds of babies. When ideas harness energy, artists never tire of working on them. Make time to discover the source of your distinctive energy and then go for it. <laughs>